Hey, this is Todd Hazelton from CNBC. I'm here at Apple, where Apple just announced a brand new 10.2 inch iPad, the Apple Watch Series 5, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Here's what they're all about. So the theme of the show this year was on performance for battery life and cameras. And so right now I'm holding the iPhone 11 Pro. This offers four hours of battery life over last year's 10s. The Pro Max offers five hours of battery life over the 10s Max. And then there's the iPhone 11, which offers an additional one hour of battery life over last year's 10R. On the back of the camera, there are three lenses this year. There's the regular 2X optical zoom, a wide angle camera, and an ultra wide angle camera. So you can take pictures in all three modes or film in all three modes. And on the front, there's also slow motion video for slow motion selfies or what Apple calls slow fees, which is kind of funny. And also when you put it in landscape mode, it'll include more in the picture. I think the camera is pretty fun. I like playing around with the wide angle lenses. We've seen this in some of the Android phones in the past, but it's the first time we've seen it with Apple with ultra wide. And we actually saw a demonstration on stage where somebody showed how you could film in all different modes at the same time. So that could be super powerful for a filmmaker or a pro who wants to use this, but also just for people who want really good pictures from their phones, which it seems like these days everybody is looking for the best camera and the best battery life out of their phones. So Apple's sort of trying to nail that here with all of its new iPhones today. Now the one thing you don't get on the iPhone 11 that you do get on the other ones is the 2X optical zoom. That's not included. That's why you see two lenses on the back of that camera as opposed to three. It also has a different display. This is colorful and brighter even than last year's phones and it looks really nice. So in addition to the three new iPhones, Apple also announced a new iPad, 10.2 inch, to replace the 9.7 inch iPad it used to sell. It starts at $329 as opposed to about the $279 price you used to pay for the 9.7 inch model. But it comes with a smart connector so you can now connect a keyboard, Apple's keyboard, to work wherever you are, sort of like you would with the iPad Pro in the past. I got to play with it a little bit. I like the bigger screen. It actually felt more like an iPad Pro at 10.2 inches than the 9.7 inch did. It has a fully laminated display, I believe, so it looked a lot better than the kind of plasticky look on the 9.7 inch iPad. Apple also announced the Apple Watch Series 5. The big highlight here is the always-on display. That means instead of having to tilt the watch to see the time or other things, you can always just glance down and see it. Obviously, this is supposed to take a hit on battery life, but Apple says you should still get 18 hours, which is about what you got with the Series 4 from last year. One of the things that was missing, though, is sleep tracking. Apple didn't talk about that at all, even though there were rumors leading into the event that we were going to get sleep tracking with this device. So not sure where that is or if it's coming at all, but it's one area where Apple sort of falls behind competitors who do offer that feature. It starts at $399, and it ships on September 20th. But if you add in all the expensive new cases like titanium or ceramic, the pricing can get all the way up to beyond $1,200. So expect to pay a lot if you want the nicest Apple Watch on the block. Okay, so that's a quick look at all the products Apple announced today. It was the 10.2 inch iPad, the Apple Watch Series 5, the iPhone 11 of course, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Whew. One more time. <laughs>